hello my gorgeous friends on the internet welcome once again so in the last section we actually stopped here where we added the register user um, function all right so what is actually happening here is this first thing we are actually requesting for the email password first name and last name of the user and then once we click on this once we call this method i will set the is loading to true and then notify listener so any widget because this page is actually going to listing to the uh the class which is the certification provider class okay i actually like putting provider so i think i forgot that sorry so authentication provider is going to list into that and then it will uh, update this ui uh this uh, this button to be gray so we are actually practicing some kind of uh separation of concerns okay so it will just help give us a nice feel then the URL, you can see we have the users, which is the path, and the base URL is coming from the, our string which we created. So this is the payload that the API requests, that the API needs, first name, last name, email, and password. Make sure they are the same, because if you need an omission, you're going to get the error. But you don't need to be afraid, because inside this else statement, you're going to get the error, and then you can arrange it properly, okay? So here now we are making the request. This is more like a data type. You can use finder if you don't know the data type. Okay, that is going to be returned. It doesn't matter. But since I already know the data type, if you hover, you can see the response. So we can just leave it that way. Then I wait. We are waiting for the response to return. Then we did HTTP dot post. So if you are doing for get, you can do HTTP dot get. If you are doing for update, put. For delete, we have delete as well. For for this, we are just going to use post. And then URI dot pass URL, then the body, we can going to pass the body. Remember this one does not need headers, so don't worry about headers for now. But you're going to see how to use headers later when we start adding tags to the to the API. Then here I check if the response the status code is 200 or, three or 201, which is successful, then we can do whatever we want to do. So from here we are going to retrieve the user ID, the token, and then store it inside our database, alright? Then here, socket exception, we can handle if there is any error, maybe connecting to the internet or the user's uh, uh, internet is off. Then here we can catch any error that is outside the scope of these two. Okay, we can try, we can catch it here and then print it out. You can see avoid print calls in production code. So whenever you're pushing your code to production, make sure you remove any kind of print line. But well, I normally use this when I'm debugging my apps, all right? So now, uh, since on the login is still the same as this one, what I'm just going to do is just to copy this. Okay, I will note one thing: it's loading. I set it to false when there's any error. That means we need to uh, re 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 reinstate this uh, button again to false. And if this response is successful, we also need to change it to false as well. Okay, so that the user can tap on it and perform another action. So this one now is for login. okay for logging in a to log in a new user so here now i'm going to change this to login user so if you look at the api properly you will see that for login this is the path so you also need to copy that part as well okay that's the part because if you miss that part you've missed everything so we're going to change this part now from users now to login okay and then still going back to that api now you can see it, it needs email and password okay so we're going to change we're going to remove this one this two because we don't need that when we want to log in a user and for this one too i'm also going to remove it as well and if you still look there again okay <laughs> sorry i'm taking you guys back <laughs> all right so and it's still a post method okay and so we are actually going to make that a post method still the same thing no difference so instead of account created you can just say uh login successful all right cool so this is what i want to show you guys and you can see now we have a uh, login and and a register user page but before you use provider you need to register the provider from your main dot that so this is our authentication provider so you go to your main dot that so uh then you have to wrap this stuff with a provider and then you, you can create the provider but for this case now we are actually using we are going to be using multiple providers you know for this app so we are going to be using the tax provider 
the database provider and the authentication provider so it won't be nice if we uh, just create one provider alone so for that i'll be using the multi provider that is provided by by provider itself so what i'm going to do now i'm just going to uh, wrap this stuff okay with a column all right then i will change this stuff now to a multi yeah a multi provider like so and change this stuff to providers okay uh, i don't know okay <laughs> all right uh provider and change that stuff to providers and this one now is going to go off this page completely and it's going to be the child of providers and we'll put it there like so and this is supposed to be providers not provider and now inside here now we're going to create uh, the authentication provider so i'll be using change notifier provider and uh, i'll use okay so you can just put underscore there if you're not using the contest okay so it doesn't matter uh, your app won't break so we're using authentication so we're going to create the type that is going to list into that we want to register which is the authentication provider so later on we are going to create more providers that needs to be added here okay so you can save that i believe it's just going to show your dialog uh, the splash screen okay and then come back to the uh, the login page okay so this is where we're going to stop for today so uh then this is where we're going to stop for now then in the next section we are going to see how to implement those logic okay the logic of the authentication and then uh create a new user and also uh, show you how to log in the new user then after then we are going to create a database for storing the user's details then we start implementing the task okay